Another student of Walter Lathan's was Willie Akins. Willie Akins was known all over St. Louis as an outstanding saxophone player. We had the pleasure of sitting down with Mrs. Sandra Akins, Willie's wife. Here she will share about her husband's childhood, his love of music, and his excellence as a teacher. Willie Aikens was born in Webster Groves, Missouri in 1939 to Willie Aikens Sr. and Odette Aikens, who went by Betty. As a child, Betty gave Willie the nickname Winky. Willie was about seven years old. Um, he had an ear infection. And, uh, you know, by the time uh, that ear infection led to a slight stroke. And that slight stroke kind of twisted his mouth and his eye area. And, uh, you know, when his mom would look at him, it looked like he was always winking at her, you know. And so she called him Winky. <laughs> and that just stood throughout his life. That's what she called her baby, Winky. Willie's first music teacher at Douglas Elementary was Mr. Walter Lathan, and he started Willie out playing on a plastic flute called a tonette. Uh, I think they, they were in the fourth grade about that time, and both of them was under uh, Mr. Latham, and uh, they played around, and you know, Mr. Latham was a no-nonsense type of band leader. And uh, so he told them at, at the end of that year, uh, don't, don't come back. You know, y'all just played your whole year in my class, and I don't like that. If you're not serious about what you're going to do, don't come back. But deep down in Willie's heart, he loved it. And so he practiced during the summer. <laughs> and when he got back to school, he begged Mr. Latham. He said, please, Mr. Latham, I won't play in your class. He said, please let me come back, you know. And so uh, at that time, uh, Mr. Latham had him playing um, uh, clarinet. And he said, well, I don't have a position for you for the clarinet. He said, but if your daddy get you a saxophone, you can come back and you can play the saxophone. And so he went home, Dad, Dad, please give me a saxophone. And at that time, yeah, that was a big thing, you know, because, you know, Willie was born in 1939. So, and the and parents didn't have as much money as they would have liked at that time. But they sacrificed, and his dad sacrificed and got him a um, saxophone. And that's how he got back into Mr. Latham's favor and started back uh, being taught under him. Mrs. Akins shared how much Willie admired Walter Latham. He admired Mr. Latham, so, you know, um, he always talked about how he was a great teacher. You know, and I, and I think that influenced Willie a lot, you know, when like I said, he, he learned a lot on the stages after he graduated in 1957 and moved to New York, he learned a lot. But I think he took a lot of that with him that he learned from Mr. Latham as far as no nonsense, as far as you got to be really sincere about what you're doing and focused on what you're doing. Lathan had been a part of Willie Aiken's music education every step of the way, even through the transition from Douglas to Webster Groves High School with the integration of the schools. As a teenager, Lathan introduced Aikens to a local trumpeter, Eddie Randall, whose band, The Blue Devils, was legendary in St. Louis. Miles Davis had played with Randall before he left East St. Louis for New York. Randall invited Aikens to be a regular with the Blue Devils, which meant Aikens started playing dance gigs all over the region. But when Willie did, he, he said that he really enjoyed playing with them because they would play like for school dances and graduations and, and then they would even venture out and play in clubs and different uh, you know, they play in different churches and different organizations throughout the Webster Groves area. And, 
you know, he, Willie liked that because at that time it got him in favor with the girls. <laughs> After Aikens graduated high school, his dad drove him to New York City to follow his dreams and join the jazz scene. He was there for about 11 years and had slowly built a reputation. Unfortunately, he then got word that his father was sick, so he made the long move back to St. Louis. You know, because that was the thing back in the 50s, the 40s, 50s, 60s. You know, New York was the place to go. So he already had that in his mind that when I graduate, I'm going to New York and play. You know, but when he got there, you know, it's the problem. He, he said he started out staying at um, the Salvation Army. And uh, then uh, one of his, uh, I think it was on his father's side, um, his, uh, his father, one of his father's sisters lived there, but she had like 11 kids. And, um, you know, so he went from the Salvation Army to living with them until he can make enough money to um, get his own apartment. You know, and he said he would do little odd and end jobs uh, in between playing in the evenings. You know, he would make deliveries and stuff for different companies, you know, to raise money that way. At the club in East St. Louis, he met the future Mrs. Sandra Aikens. Ed Nicholson, like I said, a few years before, Ed Nicholson was the jazz uh, musician uh, teacher at the high school I was going to at East St. Louis Senior High School. And so that's how I knew Ed. And um, then uh, I got a gig at the celebrity room where Ed was working with Willie Aikens. And that's how Willie and I first met. I admired the genius part in him that he, he knew all of these tunes. You know, like I said, I thought it, the first time he asked me, uh, what tune you want me to play, trying to impress me. You know, and I thought I was gonna really say something that he didn't even know. I said, cry me a river. And when he, most of the time, he, Willie would bring his soprano saxophone on the gigs, but he very seldom played it. And this particular time when I asked him to play that, instead of him playing it on the um, alto sax or tenor sax, uh, he's really known for his tenor sax, uh, he played it on the soprano sax. And I thought that was the most beautiful. Oh man, that, that really got my attention, yeah. In 1990, Aiken started playing at Sproul's, a club in Midtown. He also played local jazz festivals and recorded a CD, but he was best known for 20 plus years of Saturday night gigs at Sproul's. He had a habit of bringing in young performers and giving them the spotlight to show off their talent. Before Willie started teaching at Webster University, <laughs> um, he taught at uh, the Sunrise Academy in University City. He taught fourth and fifth graders. Yeah, awesome. And um, as, as these young men and women grew older and, and stayed in their trade, their parents would bring them to schools. You know, uh, children could come, but they couldn't drink or anything like that. Um, but so he would give them the opportunity to sit in, you know, on his different tunes and stuff. And of course, they would bring their friends from different places. And uh, that's how um, Willie had be, uh, become recognized as, you know, being one of the greatest to work with young musicians. One young drummer, Montez Coleman, became a longtime member of the Willie Aikens Quartet. Coleman was also very well known on the St. Louis jazz scene. Unfortunately, we lost Mr. Coleman in January of 2022. Mrs. Aikens shared a story about Willie and Montez. Uh, Willie was just like that. He was a perfectionist. And uh, he, 
like things a certain way and uh, because he spent so much time in New York with other artists he learned different things from them about how to make your group good and um, Montez <laughs> had this habit of being late and that was one of Willie's pet peeves he didn't like that he wanted the band to be there on time, set up already, and when whoever, wherever he was playing, they say, okay, we hit at 8 o'clock, he wants to hit right at 8 o'clock. Yeah. So this particular time, uh, he came and the band was jammed. <laughs> and he looked over there. Well, Willie has a habit of uh, allowing other musicians to sit in on occasions, you know, to give them some exposure. Uh, so that's just what uh, Montez felt like that's what it was. And so uh, during the break, you know, he, he, he got ready to come up after the break to, and Willie told him, no, nah, man. He said, I told you about being late. He said, now, Steve is my, Steve Tatum is my drummer now. Yeah. <laughs> So that, that, that hurt Montez's heart, feelings, and everything, but it didn't stop him from wanting to play with Willie Aikens, and they went on to make CDs together and still do different performances after that. In the 2000s, Aikens came to Webster University to teach a music combo class. Over the 12 years he taught, he became known for pulling out his sax and jamming with the students. Joe Mancuso is an accomplished jazz vocalist who is one of Aiken's students at Webster. Mancuso summed up Aiken's legacy as follows. Willie influenced more than just music. He influenced lives. Willie gave so many performers their start on the scene without ever expecting anything in return. Willie taught me how to sacrifice even if it meant laying my life to the side to help someone else. He was so incredibly selfless, anyone who knew him can attest to that. He left such a legacy in St. Louis that Mancuso and others in the music community established a Webster University scholarship in his honor, as well as an annual jazz festival to keep Aiken's memory and music alive. Joe just fell in love with Willie, and uh, he often used Willie on um, some of the gigs that he had, you know, and <laughs> this particular um, gig he had uh, on September the 4th in 2015, Willie was scheduled to play, and um, he, he wasn't well enough to play. So that's when Joe found out that he was extremely ill and he didn't have much longer to live. So Joe started uh, Willie Aikens Go Fund Me and raised funds for Willie. That was awesome. So I, I, you know, I can't thank the many people that contributed to that fund. His his fans, other musicians, family, friends from all over the United States and abroad, you know, contributed to that. And um, I just don't feel like I can thank them enough for doing that at that particular time. 